Hi, everybody. It's Georgia Rose from Zencuda. Welcome to the show. It must be Monday night at 7 o'clock because I'm here in Strong Island Television Studios and I am on the mic as usual. I'm just sharing the show. We've got astrology and all kinds of good stuff tonight, so welcome. I am here every Monday night and at 7 o'clock and I... Oops. That's the intro. I'm here every Monday night at 7 o'clock and we talk all things astrology and spiritual wisdom. Sometimes we have spiritual guests. Sometimes I pull cards and do tarot. Anything that we can do to make our soul space grow and expand. Tonight we're going to talk a little bit about the astrology, the full moon in Scorpio, which is coming in on tomorrow actually, tomorrow evening in my area, maybe on the 24th in, um, if you're in other parts of the world. But for the, those of us in the United States on the East Coast, it's going to be tomorrow night. If you're on the West Coast, it'll be earlier in the day. And after that, I want to talk a little bit about how Zenkuda came to be and the birth of Zenkuda and what, how that happened. And if you want more information about the Scorpio full moon after I give my little report tonight, you can always go on the Zenkuda YouTube channel. We have a whole video on there about the full moon in Scorpio. It's going to be a big one. So if you want to share the show, please do that. I'm just going to do that right now on a couple of um, pages that I have that allow me to do that. And then I'm going to see who is in the soul space with me tonight. I'd love to hear about how you guys are all feeling because I'm going to just say it right out, guys. This energy is annoying. Today was a very annoying day. I felt like I couldn't really get out of my own way and I don't feel like that very often, but it happens. Um, yeah, it's really annoying energy, I feel like. Ever since Saturday was a very tiring day, but yesterday was all right. But today is just an annoying day. I think that's because we have some squares to Pluto coming in with this full moon. So we'll see what uh, what the culmination of that is in a couple of days, right? I'll hear all your stories. So I have Joanne in the uh, soul space. I've got Sarah. I've got Anita. Welcome. And people are starting to pile in now. So first thing I want to talk about is the um, full moon. Uh, do a little astrology for you guys. How did you guys all make out this past weekend with the Jupiter sat, um, Jupiter Uranus conjunction we had in Taurus, which I talked about a lot beforehand. We were talking about that for a couple of weeks actually before it happened on Saturday. But that's an energy that's probably going to be with us for quite a few weeks. Um, it's an energy that may even last a couple of months actually because we have a lot of planets who are going to be going in that area of Taurus. We'll talk about that. So I'm going to go right to the full moon in Scorpio. For all you Scorpio people out there, um, moon, sun, or rising sign, you're going to feel this a lot. Now, I'm a Scorpio moon, plus I have five planets in Scorpio. So I know this full moon is going to be a little, you know, that might be why I feel a little annoyed today too. But I so rarely get annoyed. Um, so Anita says she's also feeling like she caught a cold, just blah, kind of. Yeah, I'm feeling that. It's the energy. It's because we have a lot of uh, squares in the uh, zodiac right now, and those are conversations of tension. But I also want to say, um, you know, watch the news because we're going to see a lot of conflict, especially religious type conflicts and things like that happening, which we obviously are seeing across the globe with what's happening with Israel and Iran. But that energy is playing out a lot this past this year for 2024. And you'll see that happening in a lot of different ways, both in your local areas and personally. Um, differences of opinions are going to be very heightened. So for this week, the Scorpio full moon comes in on the 23rd, which is uh, Tuesday, Wednesday if you're in certain areas of the, of the globe. But the full moon in Scorpio ignites the Scorpio-Taurus axis for us. And the Scorpio-Taurus axis in the chart is really life and death. It's not literal life and death, but it's the... Um, the transformation, metamorphosis, revolution. In the video that I put on, on YouTube, I mention and reference a lot about the caterpillar and the butterfly. And that's a very um, classic archetype that we give to Scorpio energy. But I want to talk a little bit tonight also about that sun being in Taurus because the Taurus energy is going to be very, very heightened for us over the next couple of weeks because we have planets now egressing into Taurus, the sun is in Taurus, and of course Taurus is where we have Jupiter and Uranus. Jupiter will go into Gemini come May and that's going to really change things up quite a lot, but we'll talk about that when we get to May. Um, right now, 
I want to talk about that four degree mark of Scorpio because that's where we have this full moon coming in. Now, Scorpio full moons are usually very intense. Scorpio full moons can bring in a lot of emotions because it's ruled by the planet Pluto and it will have a tendency to bring things that are in the dark to light. Um, Scorpio energy can be obsessive and possessive, but it's also very passionate, very brave energy. Um, it's also an energy that really ignites places in our chart where we like to self-protect, to defend ourselves, where we run scripts of self-protection. So look in your chart, see where Taurus and Scorpio are, and that's where it's going to be mostly affected for you. Now, I am putting together a video and an online course about basic astrology on how to actually read your own chart, where to find information you need. The kind of uh, astrology I do is evolutionary astrology. So those definitions that you find on the internet quite often are just skimming the surface of what the real definitions are. So be prepared. If you're going to start to study astrology with me, you're going to go a little bit deeper, but I think that's kind of what you all like. And I'm going to put up a few hearts there because I love evolutionary astrology. I think it really zeroes in on our soul's intention and why we're here. So for those of you who are in the fixed signs, fixed signs are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, you're going to feel this full moon quite a bit because Scorpio and Taurus are fixed signs. One's earth, one's water. This full moon brings us a chance to explore our resistance to change. Look at where you resist change, where you are maybe a little bit hesitant or procrastinate in changing things up, because those places are really going to be highlighted for you right now, because the universe wants us to change and wants us to really move forward with our lives. But we sometimes have fear and what you want to do with this full moon is really recognize any unacknowledged fear and also recognize any unacknowledged desire. That's really the Scorpio energy ruled by Pluto. It'll bring a lot of what's in the dark up to light, a lot of our fears and anxieties. It can be very anxiety provoking, especially since we have um, the Jupiter and Uranian energy right across from the Scorpio. This will also make us emotional because of that fear factor. It's going to ignite places in our world where we have very deep patterns um, of habitual self-protection, you know, those scripts that we run that make us kind of preserve ourselves. But by the same token, we all know there's polar polarization that goes on with all energy. There's a certain aspect and there's an opposite. Well, the opposite aspect of that is it's also going to give us a lot of clarity. Because when Scorpio brings things that are hidden into the light, we sometimes see things that perhaps we don't necessarily want to see, but that once we do see, we gain a tremendous amount of clarity and understanding about what goes on really in the depths of our emotion, in the depth of our life. So we just had Chiron, the planet of the wounded healer, on the North Node, which is our you know future destiny, the place, the North Node, the arrow pointing to why we're here. And with an energy like that coming on above this full moon, it really does give us a tremendous opportunity for healing. Now, that doesn't mean that we're going to wake up one morning and everything's going to be lollipops and roses. What it means that is that we're going to have an opportunity to transform those things that are really deeply hidden in our psyche and in our subconscious mind in order to bring them to light to heal them. That's a journey that is a transformation and a metamorphosis that's not always easy. But at the end of it, we will really have tremendous growth and a tremendous amount of elevation, not only of our life here in the, in the material world, but also our soul's growth in the metaphysical world. So there's a chance for us to deepen our relationships also with greater clarity, become more conscious of our desires. Because Pluto is the planet of our desires, the soul's desire in this lifetime and the soul's intention in this lifetime. So when we have a full moon coming in squaring Pluto and having a conversation of tension, Pluto is more apt to bring things that are hidden into light. So think about where your most tender things are, your biggest fears. Also, as the week progresses and we head on into, you know, the late days of April, you will also find your dreams are going to start to get very active because with Pluto where it is and we have some aspects with Neptune and Mars coming in that are going to make our subconscious and our dreams pretty active. And so it's up to you to decide when you have these dreams, 
which are messages and which are truth and which are dreams that are originating from your fear. Because even when we meditate and we sometimes go into a different level of consciousness, we can sometimes get confused when we see or hear something or have an experience in that consciousness and we think it's truth, but maybe it was just, and it's frightening, maybe it's a nightmare or maybe it's a bad dream, but maybe that's just the fear of our subconscious mind moving forward. So don't take all of those bad dreams and those nightmares literally. There's a message within them of some work you might have to do in the daytime world, but most likely there are messages there. So they may not be literal in this energy. Um, a full moon is the peak of the maturation cycle of the moon. So when we have a full moon like this, it's also kicking off the solar eclipse energy that we had just back a couple of weeks ago, which also will give us a lot of truth about what is hidden and insights and clarity. Um, the best way to find what is true and what is illusion, because don't forget, we have still have some planets going on in Pisces and Neptune is in Pisces, which is all dreaminess and ethereal and all that stuff. It's out there. It's floaty. So the best way to ground yourself and know what's real and what's not real in this energy is to be in the body. Um, I've been taking a break every day and going for a walk. I've been making sure that I, I move the body in different ways, getting back to a little bit of my yoga practice at home because I still have a little bit of an injury. Um, and that's really helpful in this energy because if we can stay in the body and ground, you know, walk in the grass barefoot, things like that, it will really help us to try, try find out what truth is to us and what truth is not. Because in a moon like this, things may come out and it may be that old, you know, Jack Nicholson um, line from A Few Good Men, you can't handle the truth, right? So we want to make sure we're grounded enough in our body to be able to handle what comes in. Um, also with this full moon, you want to be in the body. Truth that are hidden are going to come out. There's a great opportunity to change and grow. Our safety and stability may be tested a little bit. Um, there's a pressure here to stay in what's familiar, but you don't want to do that. This is a great opportunity to transform and go into places where you never have been before. Themes on the Scorpio-Taurus axis are um, finances, resources, food, housing, real estate, um, the resources of others, and also the resources of what you have within you. Uh, the Scorpio-Taurus axis and a Scorpio full moon will ask you when things that are hidden are revealed to rely on your own resources and your own special gifts to navigate them. Um, this is also about merging and attachments. So what are you attached to that is not good for you? Where do you need to merge more in your life to get things going that are more in your potential and feeding your full potential? This is a great moon to also process any unprocessed emotions. Take some quiet time. Start to really think about what's in the vault that you aren't dealing with and allow yourself to deal with it and get it out, release it because that is liberation. And once we are liberated, that energy that we spent hiding something or keeping something pressed down now can be given to another thing that is better for us and really puts us in a better potential. Um, it is also a great full moon for illuminating your shadows. You know, the things that you are f fearful of, you want to bring them into the light so that you, again, get liberated and become stronger. Uh, this is also a full moon, just looking at my notes, where you want to explore the core of your desires. Squaring Pluto, this is, Pluto is an energy of core desires. Um, sometimes when we see a Pluto retrograde energy in a chart, it can be someone who has a really hard time pinpointing what they desire or their desires will be fleeting. In this energy, you may feel that a little bit, but you want to get into the body to really understand what your desires are. Um, recognize where you have like habitual coping strategies. Like if you're someone who runs home, puts their head under the cover, or you're someone who is aggressive, or you're someone who, you know, habitually deals with things in a certain way that's negative, this is the energy to clear it. This is where you really want to go deep, get underneath it, and find out why you do what you do, that core desire. Um, so it's a very intense energy but it's a great energy for re recognizing those defense mechanisms and coping strategies that really don't do us good, that keep us away from an experience that we need to have in order to grow. 
it's like, did you ever know anybody who goes from relationship to relationship and like they always seem to be with the same type of person, but in the end it's too much and they run away? It's that kind of an energy that you want to avoid because you'll keep redoing and redoing and redoing and redoing that energy because you're not learning the lesson by allowing yourself to dive into it and go deep and see the light that's past that, that's on the other side of that door. So open those doors to your vault, open that shadow energy, that shadow work that's within you that you're always squashing down, you're always pushing down, you don't want to feel it, you don't want to deal with it, you don't want to see it. This is a full moon energy that you want to bring it out. Don't wallow in it, but feel it, grieve it, l l feel the loss of it, and then let go of it. Because where that attachment once was, something beautiful can come in. Um, this is also an energy, you know, this Pluto energy is really heavy in this full moon, but Pluto is in Aquarius right now. And Aquarius is a forward momentum energy. It's the future. It's forward thinking. That's why you want to clear these things out of the vault and you want to bring in new energy because Pluto is going to be in Aquarius for the next 20 years and it wants us to move forward in our life. You will also see these things play out in the collective field because I think we're already doing that really, but um, you'll see these things play out, especially where it comes to real estate, financial markets, and food and resources in the next few months. You're going to see um, those things change. You'll also see, because Pluto is in Aquarius, you'll see some future orientation with those things. The, you know, things to our food supply may be limited, or the way we grow food may change drastically. Um, healing energy is definitely going to come up in this. Um, Death, rebirth, that's the cycle of Scorpio Taurus, death, rebirth. You know, something has to die in order to make room for life. We learn to live life through experiencing death. That's when we have the, the reverence for it, the gratitude for it, the, we understand the preciousness of it. We wouldn't understand that about life if we didn't have death. If we didn't experience death, we wouldn't live life. So that's this energy, let go of what no longer serves, release the attachment, let it die so that you can now come into rebirth and find the living. All right. So I'm going to go to the comments, see if you guys have any questions about the full moon. Um, I think we have a bot on again. Someone named Soul Vibes needs to get um, out of the chat. Carmine. Joanna Maya says she's not getting any sound. I think everybody else has sound, so I don't know what that's about. Um, Darlene says she's a Taurus and she's been in corporate America her whole life, truly wants to own her own healing teaching biz and have so many ideas for workshops, but fear of failure. So what I can tell you, um, Darlene is unless you have a very specific plan and a product or something that is extremely unique to you, it would be a very hard thing to do. And I'm not trying to discourage you. I just know that we are in an an energy right now will be for the next decade or so where healers are going to come out of the woodwork and people are going to come out of the woodwork because it's just the energy now everybody wants to do that so my best advice to you is you cannot play to an algorithm you cannot play to a general audience you have to play to forming a very niche type of marketing a very niche type of following like i have in the zakuda community um, in order to really help the world. And the other question to ask yourself is, do I want to do this because I love it and I want to do it for me? Or is this an experience that I want to have to help others and bring my wisdom and my experience to them? Um, it has to be the latter for, first and foremost because everybody wants to be a healer. Everybody wants to be an influencer and they want to do it because they want to be seen. They want to heal their own wounds. They want to be out there. And that's so not the reason to do it because none of those things are going to come from doing that. Um, and that's just my own experience being out here for the last decade or so. Um, it has to be a real labor of love. And that's really um, what it is. If you're really going to do any kind of healing work, this is deep, deep soul work. It's not something that you go into to make a million dollars or uh, be seen and, you know, be Mel Robbins on the cover of five million books. Well, there's no way you're ever going to do that and keep your sincerity. There's no way you're ever going to live in that world and be completely authentic to the soul work. I'm sorry, you're just not. Um, no one is. And you see it with everybody who has ever become hyper 
focused on the business side of spirituality. Um, everyone from preachers to Doreen Virtue to, you know, um, hate to say it, he's one of my guys, <laughs> so I won't say it. But I think one of the few that I ever saw that remained true to her message was Pema Chodron, who's the Buddhist monk. And that's because she lives in Gampo Abbey in a monastery and she's not into all this. So that's my advice. I don't think um, I don't think there's any room in the world for performance art. And I'm not saying you're looking to do that. I'm just saying that most people go into this to do that. And what ends up happening for those of us who don't go into it for that is... Um, which I think you are that person who is not going into it for that, is unfortunately we have a human nature that puts us in judgment against the performance artists. So it's very hard. It's a tremendous amount of work to get yourself spiritually in a place where you can do this work in a public place and not feel like, oh my God, the whole world is watching me. Well, I don't really care if the whole world is watching me. I just care if like the hundred people who are viewing this show tonight find value in it. And that's how you really have to shift your focus and your thinking. I'm not here to be world famous and be everybody's guru. I just want to help somebody as, as though many mentors helped me. So that's my advice to you. Um, and you can always call me anytime and we'll chat a little bit. But, um, you know, that's the, uh, that's the thing. Um, So, yeah, and if you experience narcissism, that's a great, you know, segue. There's a million different gurus and self-help people out there doing narcissism, but you might have an angle on it that really works, you know. Um, but I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're in any kind of very lucrative business where you're earning a tremendous amount of abundance, you're not going to have a healing business that's going to do that. Um, you could have something that will sustain you, absolutely. And that's where my thinking really is shifted now. You know, I have no desire to drive the BMW convertible anymore. Did that, been there, had everything. Now I just am in a different place in my life. I'm very simplistic. I don't need very much. And um, sometimes I say like I even kind of live a monastic life. And I think that there's a shift that has to happen where you really step out of the material world. And I think that's where that fear of failure comes from us, for us because, and for everyone that's listening, that fear of failure when we want to change a career or follow our authenticity, it comes so much from the conditioning we've had that, oh, you can't do that. How are you going to live? Oh, you need to buy food and you need to have a home and you have to pay a mortgage and you have to drive a car and all these things. And I think we're going to see some very different perspectives on all of those conditioning items in the not too distant future. I think that we are going to become more powerful in our own resources than we are in the resources that we're taught to be powerful in. And I see that happening a lot. I don't know if it's just my sphere now, but that's what I feel like. Um, so do it because you love it. Don't do it because you're looking for a certain um, exchange from it, I guess is the way. Um, I don't think it's a pink moon. I'm not sure. I'd have to look that up. I'm sorry, Anita. I should know that. Um, Kim Murray, how are you doing? And um, no, you're welcome, Darlene, because I think um, that was also a really good thing to talk about for everybody who's listening, because I think sometimes our dreams and our hopes and our wishes get held back because someone's feeding us and telling us or our own, you know, memory field is telling us we can't do it because there's some materialism or some physical thing in the world that will not be met. And I'm saying that's very real, but you have to go in it with the right idea of what you want to get out of it you know why do you really want to do it and just ask yourself that you know um because i think there are tremendous amount of good people in the world that want to help other people there's a certain way we have to do it right it's not about us anymore um so i'm going to go to a commercial break and when i come back i'm going to um, do some chart reading for uh, linda demore i don't know if she's on today she can always play it back i'll send her the show and um and then we're going to talk a little bit about how Zancuda came about. So we'll be back in one minute. All right. Is everybody having a good time tonight or what? That's what I thought. 
It's Teresa from Tea Time. What's my show about? I interview people in the entertainment industry. Producers, directors, actors. And guess what? My show is on every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. on Channel 20 on Optimum TV. So tune in because it's fun, interesting, and exciting. Hi everybody, I'm Stephen Michael. Come follow me every Saturday night at 10.30 p.m. Channel 115 on the Keeping It Real with Stephen Michael Show. Come hang out with me and DJ Brian as we play your favorite music. We have your motivational messages and I promise you, you'll leave a happier person. The show is all about faith, mental health awareness, and motivational messages. I'll see you every Saturday night, 10.30 p.m. Channel 115, where the insanity begins. And all your problems make you want to scream and shout. Keeping it real with Stephen Michael. Hey, we're right back at you. Hey, right back at you. So how is everybody? So I see I have a lot more people on tonight. Hey, Kim, I've got um, Gira on. Hi, Gira. And I see Janet's on. Sending love to Janet. Her brother was one of my very good friends. Joanne. Okay. So I'm going to read somebody's chart at the end of the show. Linda DeMori, if you're out there watching or listening, I'm going to be reading your chart. But first, I just wanted to talk a little bit about how Zancuda was born. I was thinking about this the other day, and I said, oh, I kind of got to tell this story. So um, I know that everyone thinks that when we have a shift or a spiritual awakening, that it's this really great thing. And you always see, you know, things on social media where people are like, oh, I'm having a spiritual awakening. You know, everything's so great. I'm like seeing everything from a new perspective. But spiritual awakenings are really hard when we have spiritual shifts in our life because usually it means that our soul is whispering to us, right? And our soul is telling us where it wants to be, how it wants us to take up space, um, what it wants us to do with our time and our attention. But we're usually not in alignment with that. So when we have an awakening of the soul and the soul starts to whisper to us, what happens is the things that are not in alignment start to fall away. And that can be brutal because we start to have things that we're attached to. We start to go into loss or grief about it. And it's beautiful that we're opening space up and all these great things start to happen. We start to meet spiritual people randomly and we start to you know, get visitations or we start to get messages from the other side or we start to um, you know, uh, see numbers, 1111 and all kinds of things like that because we're really starting to get in touch with source energy because our soul is whispering to us and telling us, hey, come over here. You were born to do this. You were born to do X, Y, and Z. And what happens is the things that we have gravitated toward out of habit and out of ritual and out of our upbringing or just influences that are not in alignment with our soul have to go somewhere. So they fall away. We lose people. We lose things, etc. So it's really important to understand that when you're having a spiritual shift, that you will go through some really dark times because the things that are not in alignment with you are going to fall away and be removed from your life. And sometimes that's not always easy. So I was at one of those places where a lot of things had happened to me and I lost quite a few people and quite a few things. And I started to get that little whisper from my soul. And at the time I owned a real estate brokerage and I was starting to delve into the spiritual world because I felt like life had to have meaning. I felt like although I had a good life and an abundance in my life, I felt like there was something missing. So I started to seek and seek and seek and I started to, 
you know, go to Reiki circles and listen to spiritual wisdom and go to lectures and I would go to tarot card readers and psychic mediums and all these things. And I always say I was like Julia Roberts in Eat, Pray, Love without the international travel. And it was like I was taking a little thing from each buffet and soon I had my Reiki attunements and I was becoming a Reiki master and I was becoming an IET master, integrated energy therapy. And I was doing card readings and messaging and all this psychic energy just boom came to the surface like unbelievably so because I was open and I was meditating and I was going to yoga and, you know, I was doing all these things that were putting my soul in alignment with source energy, with the energy of God, whatever you believe that to be. And so I'm doing all these things and I'm trying to find my way. I'm reinventing myself and I'm still in this business world where I own a brokerage and I'm, you know, doing business every day in a, in a not so spiritual world, even though I own the place, it's still a not so spiritual world. And getting my Zen on every Monday night at my offices, I would close my office for the day and on Monday evenings. We would actually have, we'd use the space to have, um, psychics come in and spiritual healers come in and Reiki people come in and it was just amazing what what would happen and and the amount of people I was meeting and I was just in this beautiful space and still doing the real estate and then one day this builder walked in and he came flying past my secretary and what came through my office doors I had these beautiful glass doors and he said are you Georgia and I said yes I'm Georgia and he said I want you to handle my project because I hear you're a barracuda. Now, if this had occurred about a year or two before, I would have been like, wow, this is great. This is so great. People think I'm a barracuda. (laughs) But not that day. Now I had a shift. I was starting to become really spiritual. My soul no longer aligned with that identity. It was now going into a newer identity, an identity that was more authentic to me and my soul. And I got really insulted. And I didn't show it. I just, you know, did what I had to do with the gentleman. I ended up doing some sales with him and some projects with him. But I was so insulted. And that day, it really stuck with me. And I was like, a barracuda? I don't want to be a barracuda. I don't want people to think I'm so aggressive and intense like that. I want people to know me for who I really am and, and what my soul really is. And, and, you know, my empathy and my compassion and my ability to really listen to people. And it really bothered me. So that day I was driving home that night and I was like, Barracuda. I kept ruminating about that this guy called me a Barracuda. And I said to myself as I'm driving home, I'm not a Barracuda, I'm a Zen Kuda. (laughs) And there the word was born. And I was like, wow, if I could take all of the ambition and energy and passion that I had building my real estate business all those years, and I could put all that discipline and constructive energy toward building my Zen and my own peace and contentment and living as determined to my soul's intention as I was determined to climb that ladder, that corporate ladder. Wow. That's what Zenkuda is. It's being in alignment with your soul, being really, really like serious about your Zen. You are living passionately. And where this took me was I'm still on this transition. I'm still on, you know, going back then. I'm still in a very intense time of trying to find my identity through spirit. And it was hard. It was really hard. It took a lot of bravery and a lot of valor. There were a lot of really tough lessons that I learned. There was quite a lot of dark nights of the soul. There were times I really questioned myself. There were times that I had even family members or very good friends kind of, you know, look at me as though I wasn't the same person anymore. And I was becoming more authentic and more powerful in my my true, true identity. And so as I came on this journey and had so many mentors that helped me, my Yogi Jackie and a lot of other people, beautiful Catherine Barley, who gave me my Reiki attunements, many, many, many people. I call them the army of angels that saved my life because they opened my eyes and awakened me. And I'm telling this story because this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction that we have in the sky right now, Uranus is the great awakener. So this is happening to a lot of people now, but it's not easy. It's not all lollipops and roses to have an awakening. It's really rough. So as I went through the process, I said to myself, I have so much wisdom and so much knowledge from going like from here to here in a very accelerated time. I want to have a place where people can go to be supported in their journey to do this. I want to create a community 
and content where people can be supported in their journey to authenticity and living a passionate life in alignment with their soul. And that's when the soul space was born and Zenkuda was born, Zenkuda was born <laughs> and it all just came together because it was so much about my own journey and the reason it happened was to now break out and bring that breakdown and break through into a place where people could find it valuable and be a benefit to them. So I just wanted to tell you that story because it aligns totally with the astrology right now of this Jupiter Scorpio axis. You can have a breakdown or a breakthrough. And with Uranus and Jupiter in the sky right there, this should be a breakthrough. It's just that you have to have the bravery and the valor to break through the breakdown to get to it. Okay. So I'm going to read Linda's chart. And um, yeah, Kathy Mar uh, Marinelli says she's having crazy dreams. Everybody is having crazy vivid dreams. There's some stuff going on in Pisces right now with Neptune there. Mars is on Pisces, on Neptune. And so everybody is really having these crazy vivid dreams. You have to discern what's fear, what's coming from your unconscious mind, your fear, because Uranus and Jupiter are together in the sky in Taurus. And Uranus is a planet that is your subconscious. That's why when Uranian things happen, sudden unexpected change, we don't understand it because it's subconscious. It's the subconscious coming forward and we can't, we don't have the capacity to understand it while it's happening. Only after it's over do we understand it and integrate the subconscious and the conscious. I hope everyone understands that. You can play it back. It will make sense. Um, so that's why we're having dreams, but we're having them to be able to discern um, what's truth and what's our fear. All right. So, um, yeah. Okay. Just looking at the comments. Okay. Um, and Sarah says there's really a lot of, oh, that's somebody else. Okay. All right. So I'm going to read Linda's chart and I have to tell you, Linda DeMori, if you are not out there listening, I hope you are. Oops, sorry. My mic, my very expensive mic that Bobby bought me. Um, Linda DeMori, if you're out there, um, great. If you're not able to listen right now, you can replay the show on Spotify and also on my Zancuda channel on YouTube. Um, and the show is up there forever. So you can always read it, look at it. You can even ask Alexa. Alexa, play the soul space with Georgia Rose and she'll play you the latest episode. Usually Alexa's like a week behind though. But anyway, I have to tell you, Linda, my love, you... I've never seen so much Gemini energy in a chart in my life. <laughs> now, that's not good or bad. It's just um, the way it is, you know? You are a Gemini, Gemini sun, a Gemini ascendant, and my lovely lady, you are a Gemini moon. So you are a triple Gemini. Yes, triple, 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 triple Gemini. That's like having a triple, double chocolate ice cream cone. So... One of the things that you are here, your whole chart, especially because of all the Gemini energy, Gemini is about communication. And the Gemini energy in your chart really also aspects, obviously, Gemini is ruled by Mercury, but Mercury has quite a lot of um, energy in your chart as well that is playing a very big part in processing a lot of the energy that you have. So I'm going to just talk to you a little bit about and I wish you were here and I wish you were like on the phone because I would love to be able to ask you some questions and get some answers but Gemini in our chart wherever Gemini is tells us about multiplicity and multiplicity duality that two things can be true at the same time right um, and two things can be false at the same time so when we have Gemini energy, it makes people very curious. Um, wherever Gemini is in your chart, you'll have curiosity about that house and what it relates to. Also, Gemini can sometimes... Um, well, Gemini is an energy... Of, it's hard to explain Gemini because it is about multiplicity. But it's an, it's an energy of perception. A lot of times people will know a Gemini and they'll say, oh my gosh, they're just talky-talky. They communicate so much. Um... They, they're scattered, they're, you know, not focused. And while that may seem to be true, the real octave of the energy of Gemini is that they're just very curious people. And because Gemini is a very curious energy, it's all about communication and that duality. 
And so if you think about it, even when we have a conversation, there's two parts to a conversation. I speak, you speak, right? Dialogue, right? That's a very Gemini thing. So for someone with a triple Gemini chart, you're going to be all about communication. And it can play out in a lot of different ways. I also see for you, Linda, that <coughs> you've got an aspect with Venus that's very much in play right now because the Taurus energy that we're talking about on the show where Jupiter and Uranus are together, you know, like they're both sitting on the same couch, they're spinning o over that part of your chart right now where you have this Taurus energy, this Gemini energy. So your Venus is in Taurus and it's very close to the Gemini energy that you have. So that means the things that you value and even your own self-preservation are really going to play a part in your communication. Almost like an energy of... Sometimes you're afraid to say something, but then you have to say it and you may end up being impulsive. Your soul in this lifetime is here to actually reconnect, re-engage and reenact an energy with communication that you did not complete in your last lifetime. And what that is, is the correct use of communication, the correct use of the energy that is all about your personal truth and communicating those personal truths in a very simple and understanding way. But one of the aspects in your chart is that you will oftentimes communicate in a very out there type of way, very ethereal um, and impulsive. And so in this lifetime, you're here to really get a grip and recognize what real communication and the value of communication is for you. Choose your words carefully and also the patterns and the way that you speak and communicate. Um, this is an energy of seeking is to seek is to ask, right? But to ask is to seek. So balancing that energy, um, because sometimes with a chart like this, you can communicate and come on very strong, or you cannot say enough. It's like you can't find the middle, middle ground, the balance. Um, this is also an energy of what you say will be oftentimes reflected back to you, that duality, that multiplicity. So really make sure that you say what you mean and that what you say has deep meaning. Make sure that you're very authentic with your words because that's going to be a, um, a theme in your life. So the questions I would ask for you if I was in front of you and doing a reading for you this evening, you know, um, face to face, Linda, is I would have to ask you, how has communication revolved around your life and how has this formed your identity? Because your moon and sun are very close together in Gemini. So this is where you really identify with communication and almost like the way someone speaks to you and the way you take in the pattern of communication can have a real effect on what your identity is and how you feel about yourself and who you think you are and how you are reflected in other people's words. And that can be painful for you and also very enlightening for you. Sometimes communication, words, um, just the patterns of life and, and the way that things are so, you know, light and dark, duality of that, that can oftentimes be overwhelming for you and you'll feel like there's a flooding of, of words or a flooding of communication or it's too much and you just have to like click it off. Um, as much as you love to talk and you love to he listen to others and you love conversation, it can become very flooding and overwhelming for you. But the funny thing about that is that the soul is here to find healing in communication. So it's all about that balance and that relationship of what's too much and what's not enough and finding that. Um, it's the paradox between something that's hidden and something that's not. It's feeling something and then masking it. You know, not being truthful with your words, saying you're okay when you're not, uh, jumping on someone else's bandwagon to champion their cause when maybe they haven't asked you to. Um, that's the imbalance because it's ruled by Mercury, all this Gemini energy. And Mercury can be a trickster, especially when we have Mercury retrograde. Things get glitchy. Mercury is known as the trickster of the Zodiac because things will seem so real and so logical. But are they true? Is it light? Is it dark? Is it real? That's what Mercury does for us. And Gemini is not just about communication, but it's also about the patterns of the world, the things that anchor in our dialogue. Um, you know, 
in Aries, we have an energy where it's we're present and we're going to be present for this. In Gemini, it's I'm going to communicate this. So Gemini's, especially with a triple Gemini, you know, air, uh, sun, moon, and rising, you're all air. So it's really, really important for you to have a regular process where you are grounding and putting your feet on the ground, um, really being present where your feet are. That grounding process will also help you to balance out your communication. And in addition to that, I think because you have so much air and it also is a lot in your 12th house, your sun and moon are both in the 12th house. This is going to make you highly psychic, highly intuitive, and deeply connected to source energy. So you're getting communication. It's almost like that can be where the flooding comes in, where it's just too much, you know, and you're, you're, you have to learn to like shut it off and say, you know, angels, I don't want to hear this now or whatever um, you would use. Now, all of that Gemini energy that you have is in the 12th house. And the 12th house traditionally is ruled by Pisces, which also is Neptune, which right now we're having a lot of cloudiness and a lot of, you know, kind of funky energy about. So I wouldn't be surprised if right now you are feeling very conflicted about certain things, especially with communication or your words not coming out right. Um, this is an energy of duplicates, like you have to do something and then do it again. Uh, that's just Gemini. You have to do things twice. Um, it is, uh, you know, the same with communication. When you think about I speak, you speak, on, off, it's communicating, right? And then it's receiving. So try and focus a little bit more on the receiving, especially when you feel like you're getting that flooding feeling of too much because re receiving will put you back into your body. And also when you allow yourself to receive, it will help you very much in that feeling of um, Mercury being the trickster. And Mercury, you know, sometimes you don't say exactly what is on your mind or you don't, you mask it. There's a mask there, you know, um, not in a bad way, but it could also be in a way that that's your self-preservation mechanism or you're trying to save someone else's feelings, but it's not entirely truthful to you and fair to you. Um, and that energy that you have is very much ruled by Uranus, which is in your first house. And we're having a lot of Uranian energy in the world right now. So for you especially, there's going to be some sudden, unexpected turns in that first house energy, which is not only just about the self and the focus of your relationship with yourself, but the first house is also where the soul discovers his personality. So I would not be surprised if you were in front of me right now and told me that you're suddenly having different perceptions and suddenly speaking differently than you ever did, or maybe you're being a little more assertive with yourself and th the mask is coming off. Because I feel like with Uranus in that house and with the transits that we have right now going on with Uranus, that that energy is really heightened for you. Um, so I would say you're here to all about communication and balancing communication with yourself and the other. Um, if you are uh, thinking about traveling, you know, Gemini is somebody who would like that. Um, and also a great movie for you to watch is Back to the Future because Gemini also can be an energy where time hops back and forth. It plays with time a little bit. Um, and what I'm going to leave you with is this, is Gemini can be a little bit of an energy of chaos. Not that you're chaotic, but just Gemini because it's duplicity, it's multiplicity, it's on, off, it's light, dark, it's two things can be true, two things can be false. That's a lot of energy. So just remember that one of your strongest suits is going to be seeing patterns in that energy. And so Geminis do have a beautiful gift for bringing order to the patterns in, in the world. However, they often hide it behind that Mercury trickster energy because they don't want to come forward and say it. So work on coming out of your shell that way a little bit, but be careful to be too impulsive. And um, remember, what is true and what is false? You're going to be asking yourself that all the time. And you're also, with this much Gemini energy, going to be really prone to be able to seeing things that are unseen, feeling the energy that is unseen. That's where the psychic stuff comes in. So you're here all to, to learn and, and be all about communication. So get on with that and maybe do some more psychic readings or things like that so that you're really in that Gemini energy. So I'm going to check the comments one last time. Oh, Jackie's watching. Hey, Jackie. And Barbara Darby's on. Um, yeah, so be careful of your dreams this week and make sure that when you wake up, if you, if you had a bad dream or a good dream, you know if it's real or not. Do the little test, you know, is this my fear dreaming or am I dreaming something really 
from a message from spirit and see where that lands for you. Um, and I'm going to leave you with that. Tomorrow is our beautiful full moon. I have a separate video on my YouTube channel about that and also on my social media on Zenkuda Soul Space. And so if you want more information, go there. And I'm also available for private readings and you can find me on Zenkuda.com. And uh, I'm looking forward to next Monday night, seeing you all once again in the soul space. And until then, have a super great full moon. And remember, let yourself release what's in the vault because Scorpio is there to reveal and bring into light the things that will help us be more empowered. Thanks so much. I'll see you next Monday night in the soul space.